would be, I suspect, Chad, a uh, young guy trying to make his mark, come over from New Zealand. Let's have a look at it here on a cold tyre. Whoa! Trying to build pressure now. Was there two cars involved in that, or was that Marco trying to go up the inside of somebody on a cold Michelin, just cracking the throttle a little bit early? Yeah, it doesn't, uh, a bit hard for me to pick. And you know, I typically won't sit on. Yeah, and it looks super competitive this year as well, uh, that Michelin uh, award that goes out. And you mentioned Matt Campbell, he's won it. And uh, oh, oh, wow. Jackson Walls here. Seems like a massive hit to the left rear of that car. He's done very well to not end up sliding across the road. Jackson was also in Bahrain and Saudi racing Carrera Cup over there. So he's been doing lots of miles. And uh, this is not the way he would have wanted to have kicked off this qualifying session. Now, this is the downside to what we spoke about before, where your two fastest laps will determine where you start race one and race two. So effectively for Jackson, particularly if he brings out the red flag here, which I imagine he's going to, he'll lose his fastest lap. That's really going to hurt him this weekend in terms of races one and two starting position. Currently sits P4, but he also currently sits hard up against the wall over the back of the circuit here. So we're going to get a replay of what hap what's happened. Uh, I suspect well, oh, that's right, right Quinn. Quinn ahead of him. Oh, he's very wide at the entry phase of the corner. You could see there, that was a great shot that you saw the previous two cars coming through. They were a lot further drivers right over towards the apex of the oh. circuit. And uh, Jackson came around there and he just looked like he was probably about a car whip too wide out towards the left-hand side. And once you're out there and you're in the marbles, I'd say he's actually gotten away with that pretty, pretty well. As did Marco Giltrap on debut with the uh, Elbamba team. Man, this is a huge story. The round winner from last year, the guy who was in the championship fight with Callum Hedge in Adelaide, he's on the back foot very early in 20. Bunch of young kids in there as well as we get set for the final on track action on what has been a fabulous Saturday here at the Grand Prix. Twilight racing again, and away we go with the Porsches. And we saw yesterday Dale Wood very strong off the start, and he looks like he's got another great jump today. Can he fire it up the inside of Harry Jones? Yes, oh. yes, he does. Oh, that's massive. That is. One of the BWT entries, we're just trying to work out whether or not it was Scott Pye or Fabian Coulthard. Looking a lot oh, like it might have been Scott Pye. They were still wrecking on the exit of turn two. The field has just been split apart from the front Safety of the field. And, flags. and have a look at the mess. It was Fabian Coulthard. It was really difficult to tell which pink Porsche had been sprayed down there at the opening turn. And it kept going and going even around the corner. Danny Studdard was getting turned around at the exit of two. Rodney Jane with big time damage to the left side of that car. We went green flag running last night. Unfortunately, we're not gonna get that same courtesy this evening. And that was a massive lock up from Fabian going into turn one. It's not abnormal, we do see it sometimes, but it was interesting there, there you go. So we've just got word that the one side of the car was in the grass, which suggests and gives a reason mm. for why it was such a lo long lockup, because somebody of Fabian's... Uh, and it can happen in these cars, Chad. Let's go through our replay sequence. So two cars on the front row. That was exactly left of shot there. Ryder Quinn uh, that I made note of the rear wheels on the second phase of the start. So when you release the, the brake and, the, and the, or release the clutch to try and add some drive to the car, to the rear wheels, you could see both of the cars didn't go anywhere, but it was the second phase that really hurt Ryder Quinn. Now, what happened here? What yeah, Harrison Cookman, I reckon, and it might have been off Matty Slavin's for him, and he looks like he's doing a pretty good job, Jackson. Danny Studdard sounds like he's struggling to get a gear here. And that car is going to get caught in a really awkward spot. Unless he can get it hard off to the left-hand side. There could be more to the story here. Harrison Goodman did a really nice job. Gold and silver down there at turns one and two. As the IRC sales car spun out of contention and I believe has stopped on the circuit now as well. So hopefully it's out of harm's way. How about the drivers pushing through the flip-flop?
for your Easter long weekend. We are back here at Albert Park, live pictures of the cleanup down there. It turns one and two, busted right front radiator for Fabian Coulthard, clearly with the amount of coolant down there. Now, hardworking officials with one last big effort to get this racetrack back together. We've got time certain approaching in about 20 minutes time, so should get some running back in here. And for Dale Wood, Andy, got the jump again like he did yesterday and then the safety car came to help his cause as well. Absolutely it did. Yeah, that was super aggressive from Dale Ward and that is his natural style. You know, he doesn't mess around. We saw in uh, race one this was Dylan O'Keefe who got shoved off the racetrack. And Dean Cook got turned around. Stuart Ward and the, the gang from Dexin are here this evening to cheer on their two cars which had a bit of a, a livery update this year. Nice to see these two checking on each other after that one. A pro and a pro-am driver. Matt Belford caught up in this one too, Andy, limping his way back. Very different feeling there between the discussion between Fabian and Rodney Jane to the previous race that we watched after a little altercation. And the big difference, wow, wow, here's the massive damage to the back of Belford's car. That right rear there looking more like it's a street rod than a yeah. Carrera Cup race car. Yeah, to my point, you know, that one there, Rodney had nowhere to go. The incident was well in front of him and he just got caught up in it. So that was far friendlier. Mm. So while they're cleaning this up, it's a good chance to tell you that Tim Zoo's Las Vegas debut is fast approaching. He's going to take on six foot six Sebastian Fandora and a unified world title fight on Easter Sunday, March 31st. And of course, the only place you'll see it in Australia. He job down at turn one, across the front of Nick McBride. So, you know, it is the way he tends to drive, regardless of whether he's in a supercar or a Carrera Cup car. And we, we love that. Only four of them in his class. So he's not getting the points reward for all the cars he's passing here. This absolutely helps him. You know, for us, we're not excited to see this. Anybody at home watching, you know, safety cars are a necessity. They have to happen. But for Jackson Walls, this is absolutely in his favour. He'd done all the... The youth in this series, how strong the kids are in Carrera Cup racing at the moment. I think Harry Jones is just going to turn 24 or 25 this year. So still pretty young himself. You know, Ryder Quinn in there. Not even 20 yet. <laughs> Bailey Hall, early 20s himself. Dale Wood, the only guy inside those top six or seven spots who's not, for want of a better term, a kid. Well, and you're absolutely right. And I'll echo that, Chad. 